Well, it is official. Donald Trump is now the Republican Party's nominee for president of the United States. And if you think that that was the story that everyone has been talking about today, well, you are wrong. Hillary Clinton, she easily stole the show from Donald Trump yesterday. In fact, her name was mentioned in one speech five times more than Trump's. Ideas, policies about creating jobs, there was almost nothing mentioned. From the U.S. Speaker of the House to Donald Trump's own children, almost every speaker trashed Clinton's reputation and record. In all my years of reporting and observing U.S. elections, this has to be the most bizarre and the ugliest expression of sentiment that I have witnessed. It was like the movie Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome, but this cast had hats and ties on. The lowest point was when New Jersey Governor Chris Christie decided to put Hillary Clinton on trial and ask the mob or the delegates to deliver a verdict. Justice Department refuses to allow you to render a verdict. I'm going to present the case now on the facts against Hillary Rodham Clinton. <laughs> Hillary Clinton, as a failure for ruining Libya and creating a nest for terrorist activity by ISIS, answer me now, is she guilty or not guilty? And here at home for risking America's secrets to keep her own and lying to cover it all up? Well, now that he has clinched the Republican presidential nomination, will Donald Trump finally release his tax returns? Now, he hasn't been shy about lashing out at other wealthy Americans who may have possible tax issues. Here's what he said about Amazon boss and Washington Post owner Jeff Bezos late last year. The Washington Post, which loses a fortune, is owned by Jeff Bezos for, keep, for purposes of keeping taxes down at his no-profit company, Amazon. All right, I'm joined now here at the big table by Nicholas Shaxson. He is a journalist who just published an article in Vanity Fair on Donald Trump's tax Affairs. Nicholas, good to have you back on the day. Um, it is interesting. Mr. Trump will talk about other people's um, tax evasions, as he, as he put it. Um, he doesn't want to release his tax returns, but um, he did talk to you about how much he thinks he's worth, didn't he? Yeah, well, I mean, he's got this figure out there of uh, over $10 billion. He put it, he, he puts it on his statements in capital letters, over $10 billion. And there's a lot of speculation about how much he's really worth. Um, and, uh, you know, the rate estimates range using kind of conventional measures between sort of two to three billion dollars. Um, uh, he's got a whole, it, it, you know, I investigated his, his whole business empire and it, it's really difficult to kind of get, it, get a sense of what the whole thing is. It's a huge, great conflict. Well, I mean, you, con you spoke with him at least twice, right? Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. you know, you went straight to him to get the information. Um, and I was reading that it is possible that he may be paying less in taxes than those middle-class Americans who want to vote for him. How, how is that possible? Well, indeed, basically, Donald Trump is, uh, at least in part, a real estate person. That's where he made his money originally, and he's still making his money from real estate, not in the same way as he used to. But um, if you're in real estate in, in the United States and you're a big player, you can cut your taxes so low they get down um, at a federal level, they get down pretty much to zero. This is now, deductions you're talking about, right? There are lots of games. There's deductions, um, huge deductions. There's depreciation. There's the ability to offset uh, losses in one area against income in another area, which people outside the real estate sector generally find they can't do. You're not mm. allowed to do that generally. Um, so there's this whole kind of smorgasbord of, of, of deductions and losses and things like that which are, real estate is probably the worst in, in, in the United States in terms of being able, just a, a great kind of feeding trough and in terms of tax, uh, the abilities to escape taxes. To and escape, you're not, you're not saying to, to evade. I mean, uh, all, of these, all of these, you know, deductions and depreciation mechanisms are legal, yeah. right? Yes, in general <clears throat> terms, yes, they are generally legal. Um, one of the things I wanted to, I was looking for, because I'm an expert in tax havens, I was looking for Donald Trump. Um, using tax havens and I asked him a couple of times about this and he said he said uh, you know I don't use tax havens um, because you can get everything you need in the United States and you may doubt his words I mean he says a lot of things that people don't believe but I, I, I think speaking to a lot of tax tax experts in the States they did find that plausible 
um, because it is just so easy to get right down to zero. You just don't need to use them. And he told me, you know, they're complicated. Nobody knows what's going on. Tax havens are kind of difficult things to, to, to use. And, it, you know, it, it is plausible. And I didn't find any... any big tax haven operations that he was involved in. Okay, so you, did, you didn't find a big smoking gun. Um, he has been called the biggest welfare king in American history. Well, he, he was called a, 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 one of the greatest wel welfare kings in the United States. Uh, that was David K. Johnson, who's one of the best known, probably the best known tax journalist in the United States, who's um, been investigating Trump for many, many years. I mean, he was um, out there in Atlantic City looking at Trump's gambling operations long, long time ago, for, 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 for a very long time. And the point is that Donald Trump is an expert at getting things out of government. He mm. is, that's what he means by welfare king. So tax subsidies are one thing, but there are all sorts of other um, goodies that you can get when you're in real estate. One of the other interesting things that he said um, in this respect was that one of the things he does these days is instead of building things, I mean, he still does build things, but his new line of business is, um, Licensing, so his name, right? Licensing his name, yes. Yeah. So he will get um, uh, somebody will will say, you know, we're going to build a building in India or Saudi Arabia or somewhere like that, and we want to put the Trump name on the top, and he'll say, yes, you can do that, and you pay me, you know, a few million up. It's like a franchise, almost. It's like right? a franchise, yeah. And so he's doing that all over the place, and he he told me he's he's got 121 of these licensing deals in the pipeline. Um, we'll wait and see what comes well, out. It's he's all the already... money he's getting then from these overseas um, licensed uh, buyers. Is that money then coming directly into the U.S.? I mean, because that's a great chance for, for him or for anyone to keep it offshore. Exactly. I mean, that, that was one of the things, one of the sort of hypotheses I looked at. And I think um, there's no evidence that he's doing any mm. of that in a, in, a, in a very aggressive way. No evidence that I could find that he's keeping that offshore. I mean, it was, you know, there were tax advisors who said, he could be doing that. We, won't, we can't see it because his tax affairs are secret. He hasn't released his tax returns. Those tax returns would answer these questions. Right. And it's a, a, a very big question. And so there was, you know, there was a tax advisor, a very well-known international tax advisor, um, who painted a picture of just how he, how he could be doing it, but with no, with no evidence. You know, you um, wrote an incredibly powerful article about Mitt Romney when he was running for the U.S. president, um, exposing his offshore haven... Um, deals, and that's one reason why a lot of people say why he wasn't elected. Um, is Donald Trump doing something at that level? Um, did, did you find anything that could? Well, I think one of the things is with Mitt Romney, I mean, he was trying to present himself as a, a kind of, um, you know, a squeaky clean, um, uh, you know, good businessman. And, and the discovery of some quite serious tax haven business of Mitt Romney's um, that he hadn't properly disclosed was very damaging to him. But with Trump, this kind of stuff, you know, you can fling anything at him, and it doesn't, um, he, stick, it doesn't right? seem to stick. So, yeah. so you know, I think you know. I remember, you know, right at the beginning of starting to investigate this article, I, I never felt that I was going to be able to have the same impact because whatever. What about you the find... IRS, though, Nicholas? I mean, the Internal Revenue Service. You know, the financial authorities there. Uh, wouldn't they be running after him if they thought there was something suspicious? Yes, they would. Uh, but I mean, he he tweeted a picture of himself signing his tax returns. That's the closest we've got to seeing his tax returns, and it's a mm. picture of. Um, Donald Trump sitting there with a stack of paper that Taller rises, than him, right? yeah, rises above his head. So they've got a huge job. And with taxes, you know, so much of it is a matter of interpretation and grey area, and and it's very difficult to pin a lot of this sort of stuff down. And yeah. and you get into sort of legal battles. And he's incredibly aggressive with his lawyers. Um, yeah. He he fights his suppliers. He fights <clears> all sorts of people. Um, with his lawyers, so so it, it you know it'd be very difficult for the IRS, and he would have some very good tax advisors who yeah, say he obviously you can, does. You, know, you can play, and he 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 says I play aggressively and I fight for every cent I can get, and yeah. it, you know it, I think he does. It shows. All right, Nicholas Jackson, as always, thanks for coming in and thanks for sharing your work with us. It is a good read, by the way, in Vanity Fair. Thank you. Thanks. All right, we're almost finished with the day, but you can always join the conversation on Twitter, either at DW News or Brent Goff TV. And don't forget to use the hashtag, the day. And remember, whatever happens between now and then, tomorrow is another day. We'll see you then, everybody. <laughs>